So yesterday in a conversation, in a session with Rob actually, um, something that came up for me was um, rage, rage towards women, towards these like very covert ways of manipulation. What is covert? Uh, like hidden. And it was, it was really intense, really fucking intense. And one thing that came up was like in my throat, this kind of, I'm not allowed to speak about this. Like whenever I would try to express it, it's just like, it didn't work. And then also noticing how hard it is for me to speak from an emotion that I feel I can speak about an emotion that I'm experiencing, but to like speak from within the emotion, it's so difficult for me. It's almost like I, I don't know how it works. Anyway, I don't know how, how this particular piece is connected to that, but just, yeah, what came up is this, rage and hatred towards women and this like I, I cannot have this like this is so forbidden I cannot speak about this and this yeah such a dilemma such a like what do I do with this such intensity in my body that has no way of um, getting space or expressing itself yeah so talking about potential shit storms. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, so cool. Thank you for sharing that. It makes so much sense. Mm. Do you want me to respond or do you want to yeah. share? With you? Um, I don't fully get where the dilemma is. You say I can't speak about it. Like why? Or... I mean, you might not at the moment speak from the emotion, but you are speaking about it. Yes. I, I mean, in what I shared in, in this experience yesterday, this came up like whenever I try to share my inner world in, in relationship to this, like it, it stopped here. And I, yeah. I literally like for, I tried several times and it didn't work. And I like, I, I burst into tears and I felt all the intensity, but I couldn't put words onto it. It's so you know crazy. Why? why? I mean, what came was I I'm I cannot speak about like this kind of you're not allowed to speak about. This is kind of like danger, danger, no, 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 no. And why it's dangerous? I mean it is, but why <laughs> for you? Oh, it's so weird. It's so weird, Ilan. It so what came up was for a very large portion of my life, I was on the side of women. Like I was defending women when other men were, were, were naming this. And so it was like, if you, if you acknowledge this experience and express it, you're, um, you're shattering a, like you're completely destroying a way of seeing things and a way of positioning yourself yeah, just complete destruction. Well, so weird. I forbidden. Yeah, it's like it's forbidden. Okay. I mean what I can respond from my side and I can do that in a very personal way is saying that you are absolutely right.
I, as a woman, somehow hook into men and use their blind spots and unconscious weak points the moment I get into contact with them. Always. Immediately. The first thing that happens. I want something from you and I get it. And I know how. Or I don't know how at the end of the day I'm doing something precise that works. Without individual adaption, it works. <laughs> yeah. I want some time because I feel like I don't want to jump to other things around it, but stay somewhere on a track. I want to hand over to you because I feel like I could go or let myself think in my awareness to other layers maybe, but I'm not sure about why would I go there or it doesn't feel like the situ situation needs something else. Mm. So I'm curious about mm. the field Yes. Being influenced by more factors than me trying to whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, whenever you, of course, want to. So one thing, yeah, like one big piece of grief around this is because it's so hidden and not talked about i will much rather go into self like not trusting myself and self-hatred and being like oh yeah that's what you're noticing yep it's like oh like these strategies are so brilliant that in the end, the man is the idiot. And it's interesting because we don't talk about it. So we could say, hey, come on, how is he an idiot? But he is, maybe not on a conscious level for the sexes, but on a subconscious level in, for both sides. The man himself thinks he is an idiot. Yeah. And the women, are uh, experiencing this kind of or are, are founding this kind of relating to men whatever this is at the end of the day being it's founded on men are idiots and they yes. are not individual idiots but collective idiots yes there are a blind mass without profile and without potential for individuality. So it's like on a conscious level, it's maybe new to somehow see, make visible the kind of men are idiots for all of us. And they might be not. 
And on the energetic level, this is the foundation of I don't know, energies, basic energies in the field, basic ideas, basic energies around what a man is and what he isn't. He is an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost, I don't want to like lead here, but of course in me, what happens also is a little bit like looking around in the space. It feels even like it's a waste of time. It would be a waste of time for me to truly like invest into him because it's like so useless it's like i would invest into potential but there is no potential it feels a little bit like that this kind of if i invest time or dedication the only useful thing that I could get from that, or that that could happen, is predefined by me, because I am the complex universe. Yes. And yeah. there is, isn't, and there, like, isn't there also this thing of like, like for a woman to have a man as a kind of a project? I think it comes down to that, or you could describe it as that. It basically also, um, yeah, I, I think these are like other words, or maybe it's another, like similar color, coming from the same matrix. Yes. That, um, that forms or limits or defines the space, maybe the universe, where two sexes can meet. Yeah. Mm. I carry this so strongly in me, it's crazy. What do you carry strongly in you? That women are, uh, that men are stupid, that men are idiots. Hmm. Like that was one of the first things that shocked me when I got into men's work. It's like, I hate men. I don't trust men. I think they're stupid. I think there's maybe a few, you know, exclusions from this, but other than that, they're numb. They don't know what they want. They're like driven by shitty instincts. They're happy with really crappy stuff. Yeah. The, the moment you said that you carry that so deeply in you was like, like a second before, I was like, what comes to my mind is men are empty. It's mm. like, this is mm -hmm. and then there is a void. Yes. <laughs> like emptiness yes. inside. And then you were jumping on this. There is like, th there is nothing that I can, that I could give essentially. There is, there is nothing in me. I am empty. Mm. And maybe when we talk about energetic impact, even our wording around own oh, idiot or no potential, this is still humans, believing in individual character and flavor and notions, etc. But at the end of the day, what runs the show is a matter of energy and not energy. And I think experiencing on both sides that men are empty, that is the end of a conversation. It's the end of a discussion. If there is emptiness, there is nothing to gain. 
So why being busy with something that just fucking doesn't exist? Yeah. So the energetic, um, let's say, reality or collapse. And in the case of a collapse, it wouldn't be a reality, but we don't know at the moment. It's just yes. everybody doesn't see anything inside of a man. And then it's interesting because then coming back to the term of a project, what a creative project, because then you invent the man. Yes. What you shape him, him, you shape him however you want. You, you invent him. There is no partner. Mm. The only potential that is in front of you is you forming a reflection of yourself. Yeah. This feels so violent in my belly. It's crazy. You can almost feel it a bit. I, it's not about like me tuning in or being able to somehow like copy those sensations, but that I some, some of this what what is in my experience something like being so trapped or so yes. much like yeah thunder in the background. It's so good. It's, it's it's everywhere this this message is everywhere it's so crazy but then and and I mean this is what like now I'm asking myself of course like how do I also kind of perpetuate it but then when I see for example when I look at men's work there's so many things that are so off it's so frustrating. You mean they are off also in the sense of feeding back into the underlying narrative that men are empty? Mm, no, I see they're trying to change it. They're like, this is serious. Like, look at, look at our culture and look at how men are being portrayed. Like, they're always the idiot. Yeah. So they're onto something, clearly. Yeah. But then there's so much that's off that it's almost like it's hard for me to take it seriously. Yeah. To take seriously that somebody took it seriously enough. Yes, exactly. That there, yeah. that there are men who are like calling this out. Yeah. Because there's so much that I, that I sense in them or project onto them that feels so off that it's very hard for me to take this seriously. Like kind of yeah. hard to discern between like what's what's like the truth in this and what's the amount of dissociation that is kind of yeah. blurring it yeah that's like that's my story in men's work i i don't know how to navigate it yeah i I, to I think i told you this also a few weeks ago like there was this gathering and the amount of disembodiment is like like, like in some moments i'm like i don't know what i'm doing here yeah and then in other moments i'm like you're touching such important things here. <laughs> I, I want to be part of this. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I really don't know how to navigate this. I really, yeah. really, really, really don't. Yeah. <sighs> Are you willing to stay in the battlefield? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Mm. Thank you for doing that. Mm. Wow.
I'm happy if you take the lead. I mean, we can go wherever you want. Or it's so, I mean, you're so into it. And of course, an embodiment of this, let's say, issue. <laughs> Is it an issue? <laughs> Just like a small <laughs> thing. <laughs> Again, it's us belittling men's misery. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so one, one thing that is very interesting for me is I don't know if that's the right answer, uh, the right question. Like how is embodiment the way forward in this? Because that's like one of my biggest frustrations in the men's field is like how much intellectualizing there is and how much theory there is and And it's like, uh, there's so much like mental jerking off. Yeah. Like this kind of, fascination with theory and with thoughts. And very often when I listen to it, first of all, I can't listen to it for a long time while staying embodied, it doesn't work. And I don't know, but to me, like often it just feels like it's not the right place to look or to explore. It just doesn't lead anywhere. Yeah. And there's a, there's a kind of pride that I sense in it. The kind yeah. of superiority also over women of like, we, we, you know, like we understand this, like we're seeing, we're yeah. seeing the, the, and, oh. Yeah. So yeah, like how, how, I don't know, like how is embodiment the way forward? It's interesting because you're frustrated from the disembodiment, so you yourself seem to know that embodiment is a way forward. So I would also be curious about like, what do yes. you think? Yes, and then comes in my own uh, self mistrust. Who am I, you know, yeah. as this like 26 year old guy uh, yeah. telling these men who've been doing this work for 20, 30 years that there's something really fucking off here? Yeah. Who am and I? And you not knowing about the potential of a body since you are a millions and billions year old tiger. Hmm. So. Who are you calling yourself being unexperienced? That's mm. arrogant. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So, okay. Why is embodiment the way forward? First of all, because this whole culture is based on disembodiment. And in this very culture, you see men being devaluated all over the place by everybody around and by themselves, just in case there is a link. You have to get embodied. Because if these two factors are linked, you are fucked. So just grab this culture at its balls and do it the other way around unlearn whatever you get a sense of as something that has conditioned you deeply as a man as a woman as any other sex you are conditioned to stay disembodied so, so just by you taking serious that you have to take something fucking serious because it costs you your lifetime every day 24 7 just because of that do something the other way around that's the first thing Second thing, be 100% embodied and from there return as a free man into your head whenever you want. But what this culture does is being disembodied out of avoiding embodiment, which is run by fear, which is another parallel because men are running from taking serious that they themselves think that they are idiots. 
they are running from something out of fear. And they are running from another thing or maybe slash the same thing out of fear. And that is them being fully embodied. Do you want to die as a man being running from things just because they scare him? Do you want to die as an unfree man? So just be embodied in order to prove to yourself that you are not a victim out of your own fear. Just that. Just fear as one example, embodiment as one example for you, having a workout for liberation itself. And the last thing, that's the only thing that really matters to me or where I feel like this is my opinion and you have to test it in order to know it better. And you're welcome to know it better then. The body, only the body, knows when there is emptiness and knows when there is trauma collapse. What's your problem in this moment, David, or any other man's problem in this culture? They tap into a sense of emptiness. And then they think, that there is nothing to gain because it is overwhelmingly realistically empty, which means nothing. Your body in this moment tells another story, even your gut feeling right now. It feels so violent in your belly. Is that empty? Your body knows. Your body knows when emptiness is about emptiness and when emptiness is about shutdown. And the problem of man is not that they think that they are idiots. The problem is they do not know how to reverse their collective shutdown. And I'm so sorry, guys, but you have to figure that out. Otherwise, you will just keep devaluating yourself. Waiting for the women to say that you are right. And you know what? I am a woman and I'm saying that you are right. Does it put you into freedom? No. It doesn't help you that women change. It doesn't help you that women say that they are bitches, because they are. I know exactly how I can get you. And the only fucking way that can make that stop is you being in charge anyway. And men being proud about analyzing their situation is a trap of conditioning. You are proud about understanding everything, guys. And that is one part that feeds into you ending up as the stupid sex anyway. An embodied mind is intelligent and you are fucking smart. You could show that. And the whole thing why we are avoiding embodiment, women, for slightly other reasons or fully other reasons than men, however, everybody avoids embodiment, is you don't want to take serious how much you have to take yourself serious. Because it doesn't only lead you into radical aliveness, but also into fear of death and into dying experiences. Go there, David. You are not even worth it, this project. Because you are empty, you believe that. And that is why you stop. And you think you stop because the culture doesn't offer you another way. There is no true dilemma. It's just you wanting to find aliveness before you died. Be an empty idiot, not worth of any attention. And go there anyway. You will end up as the freest man on earth. In other words, one thing that I see in the man scene is based on something that has been beaten into men as little boys. You have to figure it out. The man's culture wants to figure out where the solution is too soon, before they died. But they will find it after they died. And they see where their death is placed. And they have everything. They have the insight, they have the analysis. They are right. They are onto something.
but they are conditioned to not take themselves serious as intelligent beings who deserve believing themselves. And that is why they are running around saying, prove to me that I'm important and the rest of the world is bored. Potency, die boy, die, die. Until then, I'm doing with you whatever I want. I can even say into your face that you are right. Does it change something? No, because we are in charge. That is why embodiment helps. And as far as I know, only embodiment, because only a body knows how to die and give birth at the same time, no matter which sex. You have to reborn your, re-give birth to yourself, reincarnate as the one that you are. And then, of course, there are things on the path of, I don't want to fuck it up. I don't want to traumatize others. I don't want to lose them. Yes. But let's face it, men witness with open eyes that they are fucking it up anyway. I mean, if there is one species amongst the species that everybody is allowed to call it out when it comes to destroying the planet, men. White, rich, heterosexual men the most dangerous species, most destructive species that ever existed. We see that. So it's like, who are you saying, oh, I don't want to destroy love and life? It's like, oh, you're doing it already. So maybe we have a check in around what truly matters. Go for being something worthy. Anyway. And your body welcomes you, no matter if you are empty, an idiot, intelligent, right or wrong. Your body is just your body. It says, hey boy, I'm, I'm you. It's okay. You could murder somebody. It would still inhale because it knows that you deserve air. So don't place your worthiness of freedom onto something that sounds good to your mind. And it's like, when I talk about it, it's like, instead of you wanting your body to say fully yes to you yourself, just the way you are, you replace your own body with a woman. But the women let you down, down for the last, they have let you down for the last 6,000 years with no exception, because otherwise everybody would be healed already. So it's like, what a cheap exchange. You are giving me your soul and I'm giving you a lollipop. And then you don't want to lose the lollipop. And in order to not experience that this doesn't pay off for you in any sense, you have to stay disembodied because your body is screaming and it has been screaming for the last 6,000 years. Why 6,000 years? It's just one theory about where the problem started when this very rich paradise culture, where now the desert Sahara is, turned into a desert. And people somehow seem to have been experiencing an amount of lack of food, lack of nourishment that they couldn't recover from the amount of stress for the next generations. 
and from there this destructive patriarchal cultures seem to have spread over the globe. It's one theory, it's one, th one theory around um, like the beginning of violence as something that a structure, a culture is based on. And I somehow like it and it makes sense because it gives or it illustrates the impact of culture as trauma and transgenerational trauma that is written in our nervous system. But there are other theories, 4,000, 2,000. I mean, do you think women were treated better before 6,000 years ago? Yes, but it's interesting that you talk about women. I think men have been treated better before. Hmm. Well, again, because I think with women, it's so much more obvious. Like the violence is so visible. Yeah. How practical. So again, if I would have to decide, men are treated even worse. And I'm the last one playing down how much violence is put into a woman's body in this culture. But it's visible. And we see it. Hiding it. And hiding on every level from you yourself that you are even able or worthy of seeing that is even trickier. So yes, women have been treated better and men have been treated better. And all other sexes have been treated better. What shocks me is that men are defending this culture. It's interesting because it's men defending this culture. I could say it proves it. But I like speaking without having to prove something. Yeah. I could say more about this point. I'm so, so thrilled in that. Let me just jump to a footnote to that. Mm -hmm. One part of my let's say conditioning in a male dominated culture to say it like that without saying that men would win in a male dominated culture they are losers as well but one part of my conditioning is that i have to be very cautious with men when it comes to science or theory or proof, uh, proofs and i stop doing that i'm like you know what i can be right or i can be wrong test it be the better expert if this doesn't pay off for you being more alive and loving yourself even more or more or somewhere at all, I'm wrong. And if it works, I do not owe you any kind of proof. So it's interesting, mm. like when we're talking and I'm like in this man movement somehow field or we are exploring this, how this feels, then I'm like aware around this, why, how, who says so? And I'm like, I'm making this up and I ask you still if you're truly curious and have nothing to lose to test it. Just because it might be something new. So it might work or not. It's like what works. I'm thrilled by that. I forgot what I wanted to say before the footnote. Can you help me? <laughs> sure. Mm. Ah, yeah. Men defending the culture. That's yeah. so interesting because I use my words, it proves that their emptiness is not empty, but energy. It proves that they are not in their depth of instincts, also believing that there is nothing, but they, they feel a charge of energy that feels like nothing. And that's the distinction between emptiness and what I talked about, what a body knows, collapse, due to trauma. Culture is trauma. That is why they are defending something, because this is them investing into their energy, like using their energy. Mm. There is a charge. Don't speak about that. Don't go there. Like, why? 
if there's just emptiness, everything will just fade out and end. It's like, it's not even a dead end or a wall. It just, there's, there's just nothing. But there is something. So you have, they have to invest into suppressing it and by that flipping back like a boomerang into the outer world saying, hey, but I think if men are just free and do what they want, they would rape even more. I mean, come on, we are guys. Something like that. They have to do something with the energy because otherwise if men would stop defending the culture that devaluates them, the energy would flow into their body, would flow into this energy wave, and they would face something else but them experiencing themselves as empty and idiots. They would experience themselves as being dangerous and full and out of control. And yes, then they will say, oh, and now I'm scared what I might do to my family. Yes, but at the end of the day, they are afraid of themselves. They are just justifying that women are, they are just using the explanation that women are weak or children are weak or that other men are raping somebody in order to not face how much they are afraid of themselves. So if they just stop consequentially defending things that are not in service of them being worthy, they would inevitably face the challenge of full embodiment. And there are many things to digest on the path. One thing is the shock, how much they are right with what they already analyzed about their situation. It's really, that's a shock. Men know what happened to them and they are not prepared for that. They are prepared for asking their partners to say, yes, you are right. Yes, you are a good lover. Yes, you are intelligent. Yes, you are whatever. They are, but they are not prepared for knowing, like experiencing that they know in themselves. They are not prepared for experiencing that they do not need anything from the outer world in order to know what is true for them. They are not prepared for that. How can a body die without dying? I mean, a body doesn't die, but everything that we can refer to when we use the word body dies. So every part of ego self image concept, like what we refer to as even as embodiment is like, we are talking about something that we think we are. Mm -hmm. And all of that dies. So the heart beats even more. We are even more alive, but um, it kills us. We have no idea what we are truly tapping into when we are truly taking serious what embodiment is. It is killing yourself in order to be fully alive. And when I say, oh, I sense my body, I connect to a stranger that after a while is a friend. But that's not the point. You are not connecting to your knee, you are your knee. And that's the end of the game. And that's the end of being trapped. Or defending anything else but life. And being more than enough. So a body can die without dying just because 
the main thing that you will experience when it comes to embodiment, or not, not embodiment, but like on the path of embodiment, inevitably going to the big gold chambers and like the rich gold chambers and that are always those points where I think there is nothing to gain. There's just emptiness. And then experiencing by testing it instead of asking who says so. Yes, I'm saying so, but that doesn't pay off any, like around anything. Like go there and test it. And then you're tapping into this emptiness and discover boom. <laughs> That's not empty, that's the opposite. And it makes you explode, it makes you die. And at the same time, it's there that you experience death as absolute and by that no more absolute. Like the game you are tapping into, like that you are introduced to on the other side, is a game that can't end. So in that way, I say the body dies, even though your heart won't stop beating. But the emphasis is on dying because it's like, ah, oh, wow, yeah, reincarnation, heard of that. It's like we always go around. <laughs> but death is death. It's the most, it's the only existent thing on earth. It's more real than life. There is no alternative. You die. And once the attempt stop around getting around that, it's like, uh -huh, we made it up. We thought it would be funny, this death thing. Joking, maybe. But, but only, only after really mm. not manipulating death. Mm. Let's have a conversation. Oh, boy. No, not my thing. So like a, a practical way of dying, or let's say sliding into this direction would be, fuck, I'm empty. I don't know what to do with that. Like, I'm, I'm so trapped. No, you are not. Be empty, be trapped. Don't know what to do with that. Where is the dilemma? There is no dilemma. Be an idiot. Be empty. Hmm. And when we say, wow, okay, I don't try to change that. I don't try to analyze why I think I'm empty, but of course I'm not empty. Even trauma therapy says that, no, you are empty. This is true. You are empty. You are an idiot. There is nothing to take from you because you are not filled with anything real, alive, or interesting for anybody. Not for you, not for your partners. And then, but then I'm like giving up. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking. That's collapse. Don't give up. Be an empty idiot who doesn't give up. How do I do that? Figure it out. That is what a nervous system can do. A nervous system is like, oh, okay. I'm a guilty, empty idiot. And I'm on the wrong track doesn't feel so bad. But the man says, oh, no, I have to save the other man from this situation. Go there. Go there. And that's so interesting because it's them really taking the lead and being in charge with the path by following the energy. Instead of, no, oh, we need direction, we need solution. Uh-uh. We need keeping breathing in being absorbed by the problem, not even the problem, being absorbed by hell. And just switching for a second 
to the other side. Um, ju just to give an example, um, I, I can't relate so deeply to being an empty idiot, maybe not at all, because I experienced myself not being conditioned as a man in this culture, but experienced a lot about unworthiness and devaluation. And my only, like, I would be still so stuck in this game with myself. Try to be worthy. Try to massage your breasts like a goddess. You are worthy everything. Or like, blah, 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 Elon. No. You think you don't deserve anything better but being treated like a piece of shit. And then like, okay. I'm not worthy anything. Like, like that was like, landing more in my body. So that's, that's why I'm like translating this kind of trick of embodiment to you maybe talking from the other side or suffering at the other side of the same tragic game. It is just, yes, but if, I'm, if I deserve only to be treated like a piece of shit, then I don't want to live. Well, yeah, that's your problem. That's a problem. I admit that, but just breathe in. <laughs> wow. And... Um, yeah, the, the body is very, it's not impressed by the depth of emptiness. It's like, wow, it's a gold chamber of energy. He doesn't want to go there. What a pity. <laughs> I love so much the elements here around. I mean, it's just crazy i never witnessed here this amount of water and rain and storm and it's really sitting here in the elements feels so good I've been having these moments and I have it right now and it's so weird. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm feeling so, I don't feel empty. I feel filled with 
shock and rage and disorientation. And my mind is like, Mm. it's like my mind goes like ah. it, it, it already dissolves <laughs> it's like it, it cannot create and it just like, ah. it's so weird <laughs> <laughs> tries to recover from being embodied <laughs> yes yes exactly come on <laughs> That's a good way to phrase it. I would love to publish this as a whole. Yeah, let's do that. I feel so rich and happy, <laughs> like so much more satisfied than from any kind of manipulation game that could have worked better <laughs> in the course of this conversation. It's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's a piece that I'm also interested that came up as well. It's like, yeah, I don't know if it's useful or not, but to shine more of a light on these particular manipulation strategies. Mm -hmm. I think every movement in this field is useful. I mean, you can fuck everything up, mm. go to the core and then fuck everything up. And you can go with one little detail and say, no open question, unfortunately. So yeah, mm. every movement there makes sense. Every, every being there, I think every presence in this field makes sense. Yes. It adds felt sense to the collective field of there is a difference between emptiness as death and emptiness as collapse. And the collapse feels like the death. Yes. And death doesn't in that way. So yes. there is something of um, people being present there is the only energy that will work as a path slash alternative because like if there is no felt sense around that people will keep flipping back into their mind it's it just yes. if nobody ever went there there is no such thing as an item and then it's like truly even though we make it up but truth is made up anyway so <laughs> We are truly trapped. <laughs> Fuck you. Ah! <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll just be with my shark. 
something else that would feel better around what let's say we could do here or i mean what do you mean i don't know like why or how you are saying that in a way of okay i'm completely like in a disastrous state and there would some would be something else around dialogue shaking elon doing something and we can it's like carrying the corpses from the battlefield <laughs> like yeah. yeah just i'm 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 wondering are you saying that around something that would feel good to stay present with as something of dialogue or contact? Or? I don't know. It doesn't feel bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Just how it is. Yeah. It feels very real. That's what I like. Mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah, having a ground. Mm. Also with my involvement with men's work. It's like, oh, yeah. Wow. <sighs> it's interesting because just as a footnote, uh, like for me being interested in these felt sense research fields, like maybe it's real. So I'm somewhere like, I'm in a shock, but I'm so grounded, like even yes. more grounded. Yes. And I'm not in a shock because yes. then, then I'm confused, but then I'm holding on to concepts and, <laughs> and a little bit more here and a little other festival there and new method and then everything will be fine. And it isn't. And you have to shut down around that it isn't and never will be on this level. So there is something of, <clears throat> you are shocked, you're confused, and so much more on and satisfied yes. than yes. with a confusion that everybody says, this is not what we call confusion. This is what we call clarity. Clear? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it like makes me, yeah. Or again, like embodiment as. it reminds me of the it came up several times in our conversation the turning everything 180 degrees around yeah it's like really this is satisfying being sh being deeply shocked completely disoriented really yeah. weird i never, would have never <laughs> looked there for satisfaction yeah. And here I am. Like, what's the richest thing on earth? Being empty, being nothing. It's like. <laughs> or what's the most empowering thing on earth? Giving up without giving up. Yes. That's always a mastery around. 